Hi, this is Sequel. Welcome to my studio in Amsterdam. Today I will show you how I made my remix from Zones Lights. I will be discussing a bootleg I did of Zone Lights. Um, the reason I made this bootleg is because my girlfriend showed me this track and she said, well, this could be really well if you make, make a remix of this. Um, so then I just started playing around with it and actually it turned into a really cool kind of remix, which then got picked up by um, Anjuna Deep and they really wanted to release it. So then it turned into an official remix. And it will be released end of this month or October 29th. And yeah, I will just show you how I made it from start to finish. Um, I started out by just taking the whole track and just cutting some pieces out of it. As you can see, I just took the whole track and I just looped a bit of it um i think i started out with this bell sound actually this is the intro of the track it works well because there's no kick or anything in it before and the whole track is pretty much um it's not a real dance track it has a four by four beat but it's easy to, to layer it with some other stuff. I just warped this quite easily. Um, and I, I think it kept the original tempo because I didn't want to change the pitch and I didn't want to use any uh, complex algorithms because they usually don't really change the sound for the better. So what I usually do is just right click and warp from here straight and then usually it finds the BPM that I'm looking for automatically. Um, then I always put it on repitch because it's the most natural sounding alg algorithm. And that's also the reason why I didn't change the BPM. Like the master tempo, it's 120. And the original track is also in 120. And this makes it really easy to just cut pieces without having to worry about the, the, the the sink and all that sort of things. Um, so I started with this bell. This is like the basis of the of the track. And I just started building around it, and I think starting with the kick, I just wanted to have a more heavier kick because the original it's quite, um, yeah, it's not so banging. Can show you the original. So So I wanted the kick to be a bit more upfront. So I added this kick drum, which is basically uh, consists of two kick drums. Using um, this little plugin called Bassism. I've been using it for maybe 10 years already. And it's a really low, low end kind of plugin, which basically just takes a sine wave and applies some pitch modulation and an envelope to create your own kick drum. Um, and it's really nice to use this for low end of the kick because it's just a sine wave, it's really clean, and you can tweak anything you want. You can tune, uh, tune the, the tail to a specific notes, and you have a lot of control over the sound. So this is the, the low end of the kick. So you can see when I change any parameters, the, the waveform changes as well.
Um, then on top, I'm using a 909 kick from the Dramazon. It's just a little bit of attack and I cut out the low end. And just together they just form a nice solid kick. I like the drummers on because you can tweak it a lot. You can also tune the bass drum. You can specify how much attack you want and decay and all sorts of things. Yeah, for processing, um, I'm using some EQing, but it's nothing extreme. So on the sub end, the low end, I've got an SSL channel strip, but I'm basically only using the EQ section. Um, cutting out a little bit of the low end. As you can see, cutting out also some high frequencies and I'm boosting uh, around 60 hertz, just because I like the the, yeah, the sub frequencies that is in this region. Um, I've got another EQ, and the reason I'm using two EQs is that this is is, is a EQ that really colors the sound because it's uh, analog modeled, and the the Fab Filter Pro Q it's more sterile. So I can use it to really pinpoint some problem frequencies and, and cut them out. There was some, some oomph in there that I didn't want, so I made a little dip. And for the rest, I just cut out all of the high frequencies because I'm going to use this other layer for the high frequencies. Um, yeah, on the drum and sound, I'm also using some saturation. And this is really my go-to saturation plugin when I'm uh, tweaking kick drums. It has a lot of um, crazy saturation and unwanted effects that you usually have with tape, but for some reason on kick drums it sounds really nice. This is the original straight from the drummers on, and this is with the magnetic on. It really changes the sound a lot. Um, this EQ is just cutting out the low frequencies. Then to glue everything together, I'm sending them all to the to the same group. And in the on the group, I'm again using the magnetic to kind of compress it. The, the magnetic also adds a really nice kind of low end boost to the to the sound. This is without and this is with you can see it's a bit more compact, a bit more full. Then again some EQing, just cutting out some extreme frequencies and maybe just uh, a little bit of bass and also some subtle settings on the SSL, but nothing too special. This is my usual process to, to make kick drums. Um, what I then did is record the bass line. And most of my bass lines are recorded on the SH9. This is a pretty old machine from, I think, 78 or something or 87 actually I mean and it's just perfect for bass lines I'm using this on I think 80% of my tracks use this machine as bass lines and I think I just uh, played it by hand. It was not really properly played. So I end up tweaking it a lot by just using um, the warping function in Ableton. And the bass line with the bells together, they create a nice, um, how do you say, they play well together. I 
think um, I recorded the bass line with the cutoff fully open. And then I used a filter, the, the MOOC filter from UAD, uh, to create a progression in the track. I like this better because when you create, uh, when you record the whole uh, cutoff automation straight from the synth, it's, it's harder to tweak it afterwards. So this is this is what I recorded. And then I'm using the MOOC filter to actually drive it, put some drive on it, and just as the main filter. It's just a really nice filter. It's really fat and warm. Um, I'm also creating a bit of um, stereo delay on the on the bass line, just because I like these really wide bass lines. And for this, I'm using the the um, Sound Toys effect rack. I really like it because you can stack different Sound Toys effects on top of each other, and they're my favorite effects. Sound Toys bundle is something I use on on every production I make. Um, I just started out with uh, this, this radiator and it's basically a preamp and it just makes the sound a bit more gritty. And then I'm using uh, the Echo Boy. Um, actually, I think this is not even being used. No, it's just a slight delay. Nothing, nothing uh, special, but the real the, the the stereo width comes from the micro shift. Micro shift is a really old school uh, chorus. I think it's also modeled from an old chorus unit, and it's just perfect for for creating this stereo bass lines, and it also works well on pads and stuff. See if you mix it in wet, it's really white. I'm sending the bass channel also to a bus. I think it's it doesn't really make any sense if I think about it now, but um, I don't know. Probably I had different channels in here before which I took out, but I'm I'm. I'm using some more um, processing on this uh, bus. I'm adding even more saturation and more. Yeah, this, I'm using the Ableton Erosion just to get some more noise on it. I just really like this gritty, noisy kind of bass lines. And this really adds some noise. to make it even more gritty. And uh, there's a bunch of stuff here on bypass. I was just probably trying out some different kind of uh, effects. Um, I've got the UAD Studer on here. It's, it's like a, a, a tape saturation um, emulation. And the nice thing about this, uh, this saturator is that it adds a lot of low end and you've got this, you've got these EQs with with low frequencies, which allow you to add really a lot of body to the to the bass. If I take this out, I just this, it's more like a, I'm using it like an EQ. But again, I just I just love saturation, and sometimes stack three, four, or five different saturation plug on plugins. Uh, on top of each other. Um, next in the chain is an equalizer, and I'm doing some mid side EQing. Um, what it is is that I'm splitting the mid uh, signal from the side signal, and the mid signal is basically the mono signal of the of the sound, 
and the side is the, the, the stereo information. So I can EQ the, the mono information separately from the, the, the stereo information. And especially on the bass line, this is really handy because I'm using the stereo wideners. I want to make sure that everything below 100 hertz is in mono because when I'm playing in a club or some sound systems, they will have problems with, uh, with bass in, in stereo. It just creates a lot of facing issues and stuff you don't want. So I'm just using a low cut on the sides till 100 hertz. And I have another low cut on, uh, on, the, on the mid just to cut off a little bit of the, the, the sub frequencies. Just to tame it a little bit because I was adding a lot of saturation and a lot of low end. And I just want to tame it a little bit. Um, yeah, next in the chain is the multi band compressor. I don't know why I'm adding so much bass, but apparently it was needed. So I'm using again a multi band compressor to even to expand some of the low end. And last in the chain is, is my compressor that's doing the side chaining. So it's a lot of processing on the bass line. And the basis for the track was the of course the melody and, and the track itself and the bass line together. This just creates the whole vibe. Um, you can hear it, it just plays really well together. We weave in and out of consciousness Um, because it's, it's a bootleg, I had already a theme when, when I started, so for me it's just, just a, a matter of adding some um, more elements to it and kind of changing the whole uh, arrangement. And as you can see on this track, I just got all different pieces of the, of the original song, because there was a bit in there that I really wanted uh, to cut out of the track, because it, uh, the vocal became a bit too cheesy and I think this was the problem with the original track, that uh, at a certain point it just became too intense. So I just cut off, uh, cut out little bits and pieces of the track, and I just kind of rebuilt the whole track from this. And then I just started adding elements to it to just kind of paint the picture. The original track, the only, only processing I'm doing is, is just cutting off the low end. Just because uh, I'm adding my own kick and bass. But I didn't want to do too much processing because it's, it's a master track. And I wish I would have the parts so I could have all the tracks separately. But they, they couldn't provide, a, provide me with the parts. So I had to do it like this. So I choose just to cut the low end um, because there's already... A lot of processing on it. I think then I just started adding some percussion first to just create a, a nice groove. So I was working with this and then I just started adding things like a clap. I use this rim shot this has quite some processing on it, just to make it a bit interesting. Um, sending it to two bus channels, and these two buses or sand channels, whatever you want to call them, they have two identical uh, delays on them. The it's the this the UAD Roland Space Echo, and I'm just using two different settings. Um, and then I'm panning them left and right 
and this just creates this really deep um, kind of stereo delay effect. So without it, it's really dry. Um, for the rest, something I do with a lot of percussion is um, adding some mid to, uh, to it by using a multiband compressor and then expanding the mid range. I'm doing this lately more than EQing because I like the dynamic, um, the dynamics. Um, yeah, I just like the way uh, it adds mid frequencies to the, the the sound when the sound is hitting. Um, the cool thing is you can tell this compressor that it has to add mid when the high end is hitting, and it's it's basically it's it's multi band. Um, compressor with sidechain, but the sidechain is now being used internally. So I've got my mid band set up here and I set it to expand. And when you go to the expert settings, you can either have it on band, which means that whenever this band is playing, it's going to expand this region, or you can put it on free. And when you put it on free mode, um, it's listening to this bit of the sound. So whenever the high frequencies are hitting, it's adding mid. So it gives the clap a bit more body. Instead of just using an EQ, it's really listening to what's happening in the, in, in the sound and, and adding mid frequencies dynamically to it. Without it, it's quite thin. And with it, it just creates a bit more body. For the rest, uh, I just have a small reverb on here, just a room reverb, nothing special. And I'm cutting out some low end. I don't use a lot of loops usually, but for this track, I just found a loop that fit perfectly. It's this loop, and it just makes uh, the, the, the groove run a little bit more, like it creates a bit more of a fast motion. Um, I did do some processing on the loop, and what I like to do is, uh, is use uh, the warp mode beats, and then using it as a transient shaper. It's a re little trick I learned that when you put, uh, put it on transients, and you select this icon here, you can, you can cut the release. But I use this to make the loop a bit more tight. For the rest, um, there's this effect rack with a really small reverb. And the same trick I'm using on the clap, just adding some mid-range by using a multiband compressor. For the rest, um, I add some, some more melody layers to it to just make it a bit more interesting. Um, one of the main themes that I add was this violin. And the way I got this melody is by actually converting the original track to, to MIDI and just taking out some notes that I wanted. So I just took a, a piece of this original of the original track let me see which part it was i think it was this part 
this has the strings in it and I just selected a bit and converted the, the harmony to a new MIDI track. Um, I like to do this because I'm not classically trained and I can't really um, play this on the piano or anything. So I'm using this function a lot just to get a basic feel for, for the notes which, which I can use. And it actually works quite well. So I think from this, I just stripped the notes that I, I wanted. Probably took out all of this. And from this, I started building a chord. And the chord turned out to be this. Like you can see here, this some of the original notes are still here. In the end, I made this um, progression out of it. The violin is from the contact library. And this is just uh, the, the library that I got when I purchased contacts, um, or like complete nine. It comes with a bunch of libraries. One of them is this uh, string uh, ensemble. I think it's from the factory library even. Yeah, it's the string ensemble. The string gets all of its um, character from the processing because when I turn off all the processing, it sounds like this. I just take out also this. This is just a violin, but I'm adding the guitar rig and the guitar rig is just really nice multi-effect unit. And I really like multi-effect units because I just like stacking th things on top of each other and, and let them control uh, each other or let LFOs modulate it. So that's why I also really like the guitar rig. First I added a delay. And then I added a phaser, a flanger actually. And I'm using the, the LFO to control, I think it's the rate that's being controlled. That's actually the tape echo speed from, from the, the tape echo. You can see it also modulating. It just makes it really moving. And as so a last plugin, I'm using the, the Psyche Delay. What this one does is it's just basically a delay with a pitch control. So it's adding uh, the delays uh, there on an octave higher than the original sound. Um, then I'm sending it to some reverb. This is a really long hall. And then just some saturation and some basic EQing, nothing special. But this really creates a nice feel for this track. really well together with the original because I just took the notes and made the progression fit. Um, for the rest, I made some effects, melody effects, and I, I used again the, the notes that I, I just uh, like I extracted from the original track.
and I'm using the contacts again. It sounds really ra random, but with some effects on top of it, it sounds really interesting. Yeah, so the sound I'm playing, it's a, it's a clarinet, also from the contact library. It's from the same factory library as uh, the other violin. On itself, it sounds a bit strange. But when I add the, 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 the guitar rig, it's a really nice atmospheric sound. I think this is just a preset that I use from Guitar Rig. I do this a lot just to try to look for something that I couldn't think of. And the effects presets from the Guitar Rig are just amazing. And they just do all sorts of crazy stuff that you really couldn't imagine yourself. Um, so what exactly is going on in this preset, I could probably find out, but I didn't really mind. I just looks for it and it just fits perfectly um, then I just cut some low end of it and I I made it a bit wider I'm using this uh, Dr. MS spatial processor and again it's a mid side processor so I'm splitting the, the mono and the stereo signals and I just increased um, the width on the sides It just makes it really wide. On this plugin you can really hear the difference also between the sides and the mid. Because you can solo them. But the mid is just the mono. And this is the side information. You gotta watch out with this plugin though, because when you push it too far, it can create some facing problems. But um, I'm using th I'm using this kind of uh, effect melody to just get out of this uh, this part here. kind of like a, a bridge between this part and this part. Um, in the break I cut obviously a piece of the break of the original track. And I just let it run with the bass line. Uh, I did also doubled up a little bit of this this uh, vocal, and I, I pitched it up seven semitones. So, it but if you mix it in really low, it's it's kind of cool. Now I'm just building with the same elements that I already showed you before. Um, I think I don't didn't make that much more melodies and more elements, but I just really looked at the arrangement and tried to make it as interesting as possible with as little elements as possible. So basically just have the violin, some percussion and the kick and bass line and the percussion that's doing the whole uh, track. Um, in the break I'm opening up the bass line with the, the filter. Uh, 
and I'm really building up towards this climax that starts here. Um, when the climax comes in, it just adds a bunch of percussion, uh, like a ride and stuff like that. Got these these hats like these running fast hats. Just to create more like a running kind of roof. There's some some delays on here and some some saturation. Again, kind of this the, the my my go-to saturation tool, this one. And I'm using also the MOOC filter to add some drive. I'm not using the filter really, but just adding drive. For the rest, there's this clap that comes in here. It's just a straight 909 clap, nothing special. And this part is basically um, just going further on the same theme, but I'm trying to not let the same part play for too long. So I've got about 16 or 32 bars of this until I change back to a more groovy part again. I think that's that's it for for all the the elements. Hi, thanks for watching. The remix is out now. You can get it on Beatport. <laughs>